Hi, I'm Stu from, from Yonder, back for another video, this time an introduction to a big part of what we do, uh, foraging. So we've come down from the clouded hills of the Mendips into a little spot near my home in the city of, of Wales. This time we'll be focusing on things that you can you know, if you're lucky enough, you can pretty much pick on your doorstep. So the most accessible place to forage really is, you know, fields, hedgerow, grassland. Um, and we're lucky enough in the UK and especially in Somerset to have great spots like this. So in this field, we've got herbs such as meadowsweet, yarrow, plants like dandelion, hogweed, in the hedgerows, rose hips, raspberries, and all sorts. So we'll be showing you some of those things today and talking you through how we use them in brewing. It's not just brewing, obviously a lot of these, these edibles um, are great in food as well. So wild garlic, for example, and then in the autumn, there's loads of fruit around here as well. Sweet chestnuts are another great example. So let's, let's take a look. Um, actually, before we do, I just wanna say, if you're foraging for wild foods, you need to be 100% certain what you've collected before you eat it. It's so important. Uh, although there are loads and loads of edibles, there are also some things that, you know, can be quite poisonous or, or at least give you an upset stomach. So use books. I'll recommend some at the end of the video. Always cross-reference. Always ask people if you're not sure. Um, and just, yeah, just be careful. Make sure you learn. It's a great hobby, great way to, uh, to learn more about plants. Um, but yeah, just be, just be very careful. So I noticed last year when we were foraging for front to front in the field, um, there's this whole hedgerow basically made up of, um, of wild raspberries. The fruit wasn't good enough to take. Uh, it was just too small and it was, it was kind of best just to leave it for the birds really. But I came back here um, about a week ago and noticed that it's starting to leaf. So raspberry leaf is actually a really good um, ingredient to use to make a herbal tea. Um, some people say it's got medicinal properties, but it's actually made me think maybe we can use this in a beer as well. So we'll be doing some trials with, with raspberry leaf in a beer, probably over the next few weeks. So there's still a few rose hips clinging to the branches. Um, the obvious beer to mention here is our rose hip saison. Um, so really, really fruity. Um, fantastic wild ingredient that hangs around through most of the winter and, and you can use obviously the flowers as well during the summer which we have done in a few other beers. This field is also covered in loads of tiny sorrel leaves which are a fantastic edible. Not something that we've used in beer before but something that it's worth showing you seeing as it's here. Um, these little kind of spearhead shaped leaves have a fantastic citrus flavor um, due to their content of oxalic acid, which is found in, in things like rhubarb. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a great, great flavor to, to use in, in a salad, really punchy, really, really fresh. You can't really miss the fragrance of, uh, of garlic in woodland in the springtime. One thing I will point out though is one to look out for that often grows amongst wild garlic is uh, a plant which, which common name is, is lords and ladies. So you can see here that the leaf, it's not identical by any means, but you know, if you're picking handfuls of wild garlic, this could easily end up in the basket and it, it is a poisonous plant. So avoid that one at all costs and check everything before you cook it and eat it. Another common herb uh, in the UK and much of Europe actually is yarrow. So in the spring, the sort of feather shaped leaves will start to appear in, in fields. Um, and then by summer and into autumn, the, the white flowers will, will appear as well. The, um, the flavor is, is fantastic, really herbal. Um, again, it's used for teas and is said to have medicinal properties. And it's actually uh, an ingredient that we use in our on our uh, sour whip beer um, with forage botanicals called Bees and Things and Flowers, which should be um, released again this summer. 
this is definitely something that, that most people will know. Dandelions um, grow pretty much everywhere really due to the way that their, their seeds spread. The good thing about dandelions is, is that you can use pretty much all of the plants, so from root through to leaves and up to the flower, all have different flavours and different, different purposes. We use dandelion root in a beer back in the autumn called Goan and Gobo, um, dandelion and burdock inspired beer. We'd like to experiment in the near future with, with the flower heads as well. There are a few fields around here where they just go completely yellow from, from dandelions at the right time of year. So. so just found some fennel starting to spring up. These are plants actually that we, we, we harvested some seeds from last year for our anniversary saison Annie. So that was alongside rosemary, plums, rose petals, and sumac. A great flavor combination. Fennel's obviously got that licorice note, which, uh, which works really well. You can use the, the leaves as a herb and obviously the bulbs as a vegetable. Hawthorn is a, another really good plant to look out for. The, uh, the leaves in spring are very, very tender and have an almost nutty taste, very subtle nutty taste. The blossom a bit later on in spring has definite almond aromas. We actually used this in a beer that we made with Brad Carter of Carters of Mosley in Birmingham for a beer for their restaurant. So we used hawthorn blossom alongside some other blossoms um, and raspberries and woodruff. Definitely look out for that beer if, if you haven't tried it. Hopefully that was helpful, an introduction into to what we're, we're collecting around here um, and, and how we use it in our beers. We'll go into more detail in later videos, into more specific beers, specific ingredients. Um, another great reference for foraging is the internet. So YouTube videos, if you're not sure about something, you want to identify them, you know, I'm sure there's, there's bound to be YouTube videos to help you do that. But here are a few books as well that um, I would definitely recommend reading or at least having in your collection to, to reference. 